You've seen it in movies. Fighter jets streaking across the sky, a missile launches, twists through the clouds, and somehow finds its target like it has a mind of its own. No wires, no remote control, just a relentless pursuit of heat. But how do these so-called heat-seeking missiles actually work? How can they lock onto something as fast and unpredictable as a jet engine and keep chasing it even as it swerves and dives? That's the question we're answering today. How do heat-seeking missiles find their target? Let's unpack the tech, the tactics, and the surprising science behind one of the most iconic weapons in modern warfare, right here on History of Simple Things. First off, heat-seeking missiles, also known as infrared homing missiles, are a type of guided weapon that use the heat signature of a target, usually the engine of an aircraft, to track and destroy it. They're often called fire-and-forget missiles because once launched, they don't need any more help from the person who fired them. They're on a mission, and their mission is to find the hottest thing in the sky and slam into it. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. To understand how they work, we need to talk a little about infrared radiation. Everything emits infrared radiation. You, me, your dog, your coffee cup. If it has heat, it's emitting infrared energy. But engines, especially jet engines, emit a lot more than, say, your morning toast. We're talking several hundred degrees Celsius, radiating strong infrared signals that are easy to pick up. This radiation is invisible to the human eye, but not to sensors designed to detect it. And that's exactly what these missiles are equipped with. Infrared sensors that scan the surroundings for heat sources. Think of the missile like a predator with a very specialized sense. It can't see the way we do, but it's incredibly sensitive to warmth. At the core of a heat-seeking missile is its seeker head. This part houses the infrared sensor. When the missile is launched, the seeker head begins scanning the field ahead, looking for something warm enough to qualify as a target. And once it locks on, it keeps tracking that heat signature, even if the target tries to dodge. These sensors aren't just basic thermometers. They're precise, highly tuned instruments. In early models, they could only detect hot objects against a cold background, which meant they worked best when chasing a plane with its exhaust pointed at the missile like a tail chase scenario. But newer systems, oh, they're way more advanced. Back in the day, first-generation heat-seeking missiles were, let's just say, a little moody. They could only engage from behind the target since that's where the engine heat was strongest, and they were pretty easy to fool. A sudden burst of flares, basically hot glowing decoys, could trick the missile into veering off course. But today's modern heat-seeking missiles use imaging infrared technology. They don't just see heat, they create an infrared image of the target, kind of like how your phone camera makes a picture, but using temperature instead of light. This lets the missile recognize the shape of the aircraft and distinguish it from flares or other heat sources. It's like giving the missile a better brain and a better eye. So now that it's locked onto a heat signature, how does the missile stay on course? That's where guidance and control come in. Heat-seeking missiles use a system called proportional navigation. It sounds fancy, but here's the gist. The missile doesn't aim at where the target is. It aims at where the target will be. It calculates the rate of change in the angle between its line of sight and the target, adjusting its path to intercept at just the right time. Constant corrections are being made mid-flight, using control fins or thrust vectoring to steer. It's like leading a moving receiver with a football pass, except the football explodes. You might be wondering, do heat-seeking missiles only work on aircraft? Not necessarily. 
While most are designed for aerial combat, there are versions that can lock onto ground vehicles, especially ones with hot engines or exhaust systems. But in general, heat-seeking missiles shine brightest in the sky, especially in dogfights, where every second counts and maneuverability is everything. That said, ground-based heat seekers like man pads, man portable air defense systems, have been a huge threat to aircraft flying low, like helicopters or transport planes. They're portable, relatively cheap, and deadly. Just point, lock, and fire. Heat-seeking missiles do face challenges from environmental conditions. Clouds, heavy rain, and even the heat of the ground can interfere with infrared tracking. That's why modern missiles are designed to work in a wide range of conditions and use smarter algorithms to filter out background noise. Some even combine infrared with radar or laser guidance to stay on target in tricky situations. In other words, today's missiles aren't just chasing heat. They're making judgment calls in real time with a built-in mini-computer analyzing every second. How fast are these missiles? Very fast. Most air-to-air -air heat seeking missiles travel at speeds over Mach 2. That's more than twice the speed of sound. They're designed to catch up with agile fighter jets, so they need speed, agility, and brain power. Combine that with small size, explosive warheads, and pinpoint accuracy, and you've got a very dangerous package. So there you have it. Heat-seeking missiles may look like simple lock-on and boom gadgets in the movies, but behind the scenes, they're marvels of thermal physics, sensor engineering, and guidance systems. From sniffing out heat like a bloodhound to dodging flares in midair, these missiles are as smart as they are fast. And next time, you're watching an action scene with a missile twisting through the sky just know there's a whole lot of science baked into that little tube of doom. It's a fascinating reminder of how warfare often pushes technology to its limits, not just to destroy, but to innovate. As much as these weapons are designed for combat, the research behind them also drives advances in sensors, materials, and artificial intelligence that can eventually trickle down into civilian tech. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.